Digital Scale Alternative Energy Team. Our sponsors were Josh Locus and Rob Rowe. Our advisor was John Beard. And I am Jeff Fordyce. This is Jonathan Warloff, Paul Dice, and Shimong Sharma. The uh, design problem summary statement for this project is to design and build a vertical axis wind turbine uh, testing unit that we can be used for evaluation in a laboratory environment. Our main objectives were to evaluate a scale model of a, in a wind tunnel, understand the unwanted forces affecting the turbine and tower, use the collected data to optimize the design of the full-size wind turbine and tower, find the potential output of the full-size wind turbine, and evaluate the self-starting capabilities of a vertical axis wind turbine. Our main constraints often had to deal with the size of our wind tunnel. Um, the size of the wind tunnel was a 12 by 12. Uh, also, a com complexity of our model due to its size, a relatively small size, and accurate representation of materials uh, for the model scaled up to full size. When you design vertical axis wind turbines, one of the main uh, features to look out for is the solidity coefficient, which is the measure of the ratio of the blade to the turbine's swept area. On the right, you can see the formula, the blade, number of blades times the cord length, cord length of the wing uh, over the radius of the wind turbine. A uh, high solidity coefficient, ratio, uh, solidity coefficient relates to higher starting torque, which is important for a vertical axis wind turbine. But uh, it also results in uh, abrupt rises when you're talking about the efficiency to tip speed ratio curve. We wanted a high uh, solidity coefficient so that we could have a macro size data acquisition. Our solidity coefficient was about 2.4, which uh, generally the range is about from 0.2 to 0.6, but we wanted like big data and uh, higher um, vibrations so that we can measure them. And uh, our solidity coefficient is 2.4 for us. One of the main problems with the vertical axis wind turbines, and uh, specifically the Darius wind turbine, which this one is, is uh, the self-starting capability. It does have none. But uh, in uh, recent research, if you talk about airfoils, it, uh, it can be done. Uh, the main uh, formula which uh, drives the whole uh, airfoils is the torque, which is the tangential force times the radius of the wind turbine. This formula depends heavily on the coefficient of tangential thrust, which uh, in turn depends upon the coefficient of lift. Now, the coefficient of lift can be maximized and optimized according to the airfoil and the Reynolds number, and uh, it can actually self-start in certain conditions. Another uh, plan which could be used for this is the auxiliary Savonius rotor. Uh, Savonius rotor is a drag is a drag-driven uh, wind turbine, which uh, can help start the vertical axis wind turbine. But later on, it produces drag rather than helping out the wind, uh, vertical axis wind turbines. So the main uh, things to look out are the low aspect ratio, the cambered airfoil, the low solidity ratio. And these days, a lot of research is being done in uh, vari uh, variable pitch. And uh, it's, it, it's a rather complex design using a lot of control systems. And uh, what it does is it just changes the pitch according to the wind direction of the blades in the wind turbine. Uh, this is the overview of the final design for the test model. Um, it's a, it was built overly uh, oversized so that there's no vibrations that come into account on the back sides of the load cells. Uh, the top of it and the bottom of it are uh, load, uh, dynamic load cell supported bearing carriers so we can measure the, the forces off of both the top and bottom that this chap is seeing. But a sort of close up of, of that at the top right. And then below here, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a, uh, at, a at a distance, there's a, a pound scale that's reading off of the, off of the uh, a distance from the center of the rotation of a uh, electric generator. And we can either load or assist that generator to actually to get a very accurate and um, changeable uh, load on the turbine to get power output for different, different testing situations. Go ahead. Design for X, design for manufacturability. It's a really simple design. It's just three straight blades in a wind turbine. And uh, it has standard shafts and airfoil that are used. Design for assembly, it can be quickly assembled and dismantled. And uh, design for cost, it's really inexpensive. Uh, half of it's made from scrap material. And uh, it's a simple prototype design. It uses standard fasteners and uh, the standard single axis load cells are being used, which are provided by the ME department. 
It, uh, the design for reliability, it's tough and durable. The steel structure is highly durable, and the results are fairly reliable for the wind tunnel size we had. The computer design of the prototype, as you can see in uh, top left and bottom right, uh, the wind tunnel uh, was a fiberglass wind tunnel over at the AERB building in Hancock. And uh, you can see the steel support structure on the right, which was designed to harbor the load cells and the bearing, and uh, which can also be seen in a magnified view over there. The prototype was first designed on a computer and later adjusted according to the constraints and the size of the wind tunnel. This is the, our initial recommendation for the full size model. Um, it's a perimeter supported tower that uh, is has two different sets of blades or uh, arrays of, of, of rotors with with uh, three blade rotors. What what happens is with a three with a uh, any kind of vertical axis wind turbine, you get horrible torque pulsations, which we really didn't appreciate until we had started doing testing on it. Um, you see the next slide, I think, or actually cu coming up, I'll, I'll I'll show sort of what, what what actually happens with the torque pulsations and why you have to stagger them. Uh, we figured out the worst possible scenario for our uh, prototype in the wind tunnel, which is shown on the right, uh, on the top right over there. The wind velocity, when it's perpendicular to the to one of the blades, it, it produces maximum drag force on the shaft. This was uh, later designed in uh, Fluent uh, for computational fluid dynamics and in Gambit. And uh, for five miles per hour wind velocity, coefficient of drag and Reynolds number, I hope you can see it, uh, were found out. And uh, now that we had the forces using those numbers, we did a finite analysis on the shaft. You can see over there on the left, it's a 0.5 inch uh, outer diameter steel shaft, which uh, has about 0.2 inches of deflections. On the right, you can see the tower we designed. Um, it's uh, basically a 40 foot high tower with a square base of 10 feet and uh, a vertical load of uh, Vertical load of another tower on top of it, plus the wind turbine was designed in the finite element analysis over here. It's a negative z-axis vertical load. The whole thing is bolted to the ground, and maximum deflections comes out to be about 0.14 inches. All right, this is the uh, sort of the start of where we, the actual testing we've been doing in the wind tunnel. The uh, the data we got from the computer output for the, the load from the dynamic load cells and the torque uh, inputted into this spreadsheet. And you can see the cursor shows up. There's the force input. This is this is the best case we've we found so far. Um, was the, was the NACA 12 airfoil at uh, seven and a half degrees pitch. Um, <coughs> energy the, the total energy can be in, in a in a uh, airstream can be calculated just from conservation of mass that you have a, a mass of fluid moving at a certain speed, but you can't just take that as your power. Uh, that's did a lot of uh, research um, and came up with, with BET's limit, which is actually established at 59.3% of the total energy available in the wind because you have to have so much energy to move the air out of the wind tunnel, or out of the turbine, sorry. Um, so in this test, this, this unit here produced 4.18 watts, and that's actually the, the power out of it, the shaft power, not just the electrical, so we don't have to take into account the losses and efficiency of the turbine. And actually got 88% uh, efficiency uh, based on the Betts Law efficiency, we're, this, is, this is our best case and really happy with that. Um, that's about all in there. And here's some more of the internal research we've done. You can see here, this is, this is for a different, uh, not a non-representative size turbine, but this is the correct curves. This is uh, a math model data um, using a CFD program for the, the coefficient of lift and coefficient of drag of a, of a NACA, I think that was NACA 12, uh, pro, wind profile. So we have you can see that you have huge forces that, that go from zero up to a large amount and back down every three times per revolution, which causes a lot of, of uh, damage if you're not ready for it with your turbine design. Uh, this is one of the load cell readings down here. Uh, this is how we found RPM going from e each one of these three pulses. You can see they, re they repeat quite nicely for each different blade for the different off balances. Um, and then here's the, the breakdown, and our, our best case was the 88% with 7.5. Everything else was quite a bit less. And you also see that there's a lot, even though we have the same, same pitch, if we allowed, this, we allowed this one to spool up and then brought twice the torque on it that it was able to support it initially, and almost three, took the efficiency times three times over it. 
Um, this is another one of the capabilities of this unit is the recording of the dynamic forces out of the load cells, the top and bottom bearings. This is critical in designing the perimeter tower so that it doesn't fail during, uh, during extended use. Uh, you can see that the, that the forces are going back and forth from zero, from, from negative past zero to back up high again. Um, and this is, these are, that actually resolved into Newtons and that's very, it's, it's, a, it's a direct scale up to a full size if you based on swept area for the forces exposed on a, on a full size tower. This is our electrical design. Uh, we decided to go with a 3.5 kilowatt brushless DC generator and that would be connected to a 3.6 kilowatt inverter that has an internal transfer switch. And on the right, the flow chart, it shows that how it would be connected in the field. The turbine would be connected to the generator, which is then connected to the inverter. And then via the internal transfer switch, the inverter is connected to either the net meter, which then grid ties the back power, or the consumer's load, which would be his house. Um, also, we created an electrical system model. Um, this was uh, used in, with Power World. Um, basically, it's to model the effects of uh, variable loading uh, on the wind turbine uh, and also the, lo the localized load and how that affects with grid tie. Um, also, it was used for ground fault calculations where it was uh, calculated to be a 60 amp fault for line to line or line to ground faults. This is just sort of a rough uh, cross section of the blade uh, so people can sort of see what we're talking about as far as blade construction goes. This is a proposed setup. Um, three different materials we tested here too, but it's a, it's a foam core with a, a mild steel spar and a, a composite shell. A three point uh, bend test was, uh, was done um, based on the SAE regulations and uh, three different uh, materials were tested, fiberglass, carbon fiber, and Kevlar. We chose these materials based on the experience with SA Aero, and um, it turns out that carbon fiber is the strongest and it has the highest stiffness, and, uh, but it is a lot costlier than, Kevlar, uh, than fiberglass. Um, the difference between fiberglass and Kevlar is not that much based on stiffness, so Kevlar is totally out of the picture. And uh, on the right, you can see our uh, test being, uh, it's a simple three-point band test. It's being pushed in the middle, and it has styrofoam supports on the ends. This is our estimated full-scale budget of the full-scale model. And going with the 3,500-watt system, you can see that the generator is just under $1,700. The inverter is $1,900. Then the wire is $450, with the meter being $600. And then mechanically, the materials for the tower ran us about, or would run about $800 and the concrete when the bearings would be about $150 each, and the materials to build the wings would be about $300 for a total estimated cost of just over $6,000. This is a more detailed breakdown of the uh, turbine side of it. This, takes, this is the, the time and money uh, breakdown for building a uh, one, one version of it with fiberglass blades and steel tower. It doesn't include concrete or electrical side of it. Uh, some of the results for the design project, uh, fiberglass is most, by far the most cost uh, effective composite to be used. Uh, research shows what we've done is that NACA 12 is going to be the best uh, airfoil to use at around 7.5 degrees positive pitch. Um, the, the scalable force profiles we have from it um, are able to be used to design the, the perimeter tower uh, so that it's, it's big enough to survive for the, the, the desired amount of time. And the test unit is still ready to go and, and can be built on to uh, do any more any further testing in vertical axis wind turbine. Suggestions conclusion, the vertical axis wind turbine can totally satisfy the objectives of the project. NACA 12, which is a symmetric airfoil at 7.5 degrees, is the best uh, for, uh, for running wind, vertical axis wind turbine. For self-starting capabilities, it, uh, a more thicker leading edge and uh, more camber is required. And uh, higher rotational speeds result in a more uh, efficient wind turbine, but are structurally limited. Acknowledgements, Rob Rowe, Dr. John Beer, Dr. Fernanda Ponta, Dr. James Clark, and uh, Nate, Nate Beer, Eric Klonowskis, and Mike LaCorte have helped us out with the project. And any questions?